Hi, it's Robin. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Commodore 64 program, Sky Travel, a window to our galaxy. Learn about the stars. I've got an original copy here published by Commodore way back in 1984. I think this is a pretty amazing bit of software because we can use it to accurately display the planets and stars from any location on Earth, not only when it was made back in 1984, but up to 10,000 years back or forward in time. That even includes 2024. Now you might have heard that there's a major eclipse happening in North America on April 8th, 2024, which will travel from Mexico across a section of the USA and get up here into Eastern Canada. So I thought we'd try to figure out how to use this software to get a preview of this eclipse. So if you're watching this before the eclipse, and especially if you were planning on traveling to witness it for yourself, here's a spoiler warning. You might not want to watch this video so it doesn't ruin the experience. But if you're watching this after the eclipse, or you're not going to go look at it in person, you just want to stay indoors, here's your chance to witness the eclipse in vivid 320 by 200 resolution, if I can get it to work. So this is the original version of the program, like I was saying, for the C64 in 1984. It was later ported to the Apple II and other systems, which were released by Micro Illusions around 1987 or 1988. The C64 version was also re-released by Micro Illusions. I don't have that version, but I've got some pictures here. The newer version has the tagline, an all-encompassing astronomy program. I'm not sure about all the differences between the original Sky Travel and the later version. I know that at least the default date when you boot up the software changes from January 1st, 1985 in the original to January 1st, 1988 in the Micro Illusions version. We're going to be using the original today. Keep it old school. So let's open this up. Commodore actually switched to this packaging. It reminds me of their plus four merchandise, even though this is a Commodore 64 product. This blue with the rainbow on it. That they used for a little bit during that misguided plus four era. Okay, so inside the box, got a plastic clamshell, the nice raised Commodore logo, disc holder. Now you can also stick two cassettes in behind. Here's the disc. I love these early Commodore disc sleeves. We'll be booting that up in a moment. Oh, if your disc becomes damaged or worn out, send $5 to Commodore Diskette Replacement. Please print clearly. And here's the included manual. Pretty substantial. They don't make manuals like this anymore. At least not printed on paper. Supplementary reading about astronomy. A glossary of terms. Math conversions. Latitude and longitude through different places on Earth. Icons about the deep sky objects. Technical notes. And about different constellations. Stone Lion of Nimrod Dog. All kinds of history, even stuff about the pyramids. Yes, I always read my manuals backwards. And there's a help sheet. Go ahead and pause that if you want to look that over. But we'll be walking through how to use the program. Anyway, very good manual. Okay, I'm going to set up the C64. We'll be using a Breadbin Commerce 64 today, 1984 style. And a real 1541. I haven't had one of these up for a little while. Okay, let's see if this disc works. All right. Ooh, handheld mode. Return. Uh oh. Yeah, that kind of stuff. 
little head knock. Oh, there we go. Good. Commodore presents the universe by the magic of sky travel. Whoa, there it goes again. Sky travel, a window to our galaxy. Copyright 84 Commodore and copyright 1984 Deltron. Well, it's having a bit of trouble there with that. Keep going. <laughs> Commodore marketing, eh? Commodore presents the universe. By the magic of sky travel, at least they give a bit of credit to the, uh, the actual developers. All this part doesn't appear in that updated version or that Micro Illusions version, of course. So maybe Commodore's claiming copyright on their intro and all the headbanging that the 1541 is doing. Welcome to the Commodore Home Planetarium, featuring sky travel, a window to our galaxy. Please be patient while the program modules are loading. <laughs> We're loading a big chunk of the universe into a very small computer, which thinks very big thoughts. Okay. Now loading data for the solar system, stars, nebulae, and a complete math package, including planetary ephemeris. How do you say that? Spherical astronomy and lots of user-friendly features. Let's explore. A complete math package. Does that imply that we can actually use it? I don't think so. I mean, obviously astronomy software like this requires its own internal math package. Spherical astronomy. Huh. Planetary ephemeris. Oh, here we go. Computing moon. Good, it looks like it loaded up okay. Computing Sun, Mercury. So is that status bar at the bottom? I think this program does require quite a bit of computation, so it's kind of amazing it works at all. It's not the fastest thing. Computing Uranus. Ooh, and there we are. We've got Leo, we've got Sex, we've got Haya and Cart. <laughs> okay, so welcome to Sky Travel. Along the right hand side, you see all the kind of status. That's the control we have over the program, or at least the uh, current status of it, and then the view of the sky. And you can see this does boot up to January 1st, 1985. The C64 doesn't have any kind of persistent real time clock. If you have that later, Micro Illusions version, January 1st, 1988. AD, it should say up there. This program's kind of confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So I'll just mention what keys I'm pressing. Use the function keys. So if you just press F1, that's the current mode you're in. If you press F1, it changes to map, and that says press return to take action. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the map to choose our location on the Earth where we want to view the eclipse from. Now, of course, you could set this to wherever you live, but what we're going to do today is set ourselves on part of the path where there's totality of eclipse. Okay, so we can use the cursor keys to set the latitude to 30 degrees and 57 minutes if we can get there. Oh, so close. 59, 56. Sometimes hard to get it exact. It's kind of like trying to land on exactly 50 bucks a gas when you're at the gas pump with today's prices. And then east west, we're going to go for minus 98 degrees. Longitude, longitude. Kind of accelerates the longer you hold it. 98 and 58. Oh, bang on. Okay, so this location is actually near Austin, Texas, and a big thank you and shout out to fellow Canadian and Commodore 64 fan, Bruce Thomas, for sharing these coordinates. He actually sent them out to a mailing list like a year ago in anticipation of this eclipse. So I took note of them and thought I'd use them for today. Thank you again, Bruce. If you do make it to the eclipse, I hope you really enjoy it. I hope the sky is perfectly clear and the weather is awesome. Okay, so we've set the location 
Next, we need to set the time. So press F1 a couple times and it says set. And that is to set the time, we'll press return. And again, we can use the cursor keys. This is kind of like setting your VCR or something. You can't just type it in directly, but it's not that bad with the cursor keys. So we're going to go to April 8, cursor left and right to move between the fields, and cursor up and down to actually change the values. And uh, we could jump way forward in time to like 9000 AD or something. <laughs> Oh, I guess I said plus 10,000 years, actually. That's from 0 AD. So it looks like the maximum you can go is 9999 AD. Anyway, what we're going to do is we'll go back to 1 and jump ahead here to 2024. That's when we're recording this. And we're going to go to 1015 AM just before the eclipse starts. What do they call that? The procession or something. 10.15. You see here it's calculated our time zone and the Julian day. Hey, didn't we talk about that? Okay, so we've got the place and the time set. Next, we want to look at the sky. And see down at the bottom, it says it's computing the moon, the sun, Mercury, Everything in the sky it has to figure out again. Okay, there's our sky. <laughs> it's a really crowded place. Uh, by default here, if you press F5, you can find different items, or items, <laughs> different bodies in the sky. Moon, Sun, Mercury, Venus. You can go through the planets. And some, uh, oh yeah, I think you can do Halley's Comet. Maybe another time. So anyway, let's find the moon. Press return. Okay, there's the moon. And actually that's the sun, I think. It's behind it. So we're going to clean up the sky a little bit here. F3 is these options. Lines is for the different uh, constellations, connecting them together into those shapes that I never could see. If you hold down Shift and F3, it toggles between lines or no lines. So I'm going to press Return, and it recomputes everything. You should see that the lines of that constellation go away. And I also want to turn off the names. So Shift F3 to No Names, and Return. There, now our sky looks a lot cleaner. There's also all those symbols in the sky, and I think those are like the, uh, what is it? No, astronomy, astrological signs. So we can turn those off as well. The symbols, well, actually, okay, we'll do that. Shift F3, no symbols. And what we can also do is right now, you see just above where it says F1 on the screen, the view is 72 degrees. That means our field of view, and we can narrow that. If we hold down Shift and minus, we can drop that down to say 36 degrees. I guess this is like zooming in, in a sense, by reducing the field of view. So I'm gonna go all the way down to nine degrees. And now you might notice that our cursor isn't pointed at anything. That sphere there is actually the sun. The moon is hidden because we turned off its symbol. So I kind of wish the moon had its own symbol separate from the astrological ones, but you can't do that. So anyway, I'm, you know what? I'm going to turn symbols back on. There, and now we can see the outline of the moon. The reason the moon isn't visible right now is because the sun is on the far side of it, the so-called dark side. It's lighting up the back of the moon. Of course, it's not really the dark side if the sun is shining on it, is it? But the far side of the moon, the sun is shining at us, we're just seeing the current dark side of the moon that's facing us. So anyway, that's why if we turn on the symbol, it puts the outline of the moon around so we can still see where the moon is. We want to actually track the moon. So if you press F5, but don't press return. If, if you press return, it just does a one-time update to point the camera at the moon. But if you don't press return, just leave it. You see how it says moon now between F3 and F7? Leave it like that. 
and the camera will keep tracking that object. Okay, so I think we're really ready now to view the eclipse. This is your last chance. Spoiler warning. If you're going to proceed, I recommend you get out your safety glasses. Okay, make sure they're ISO uh, 12312-2 approved. Well, if you don't have a pair, you can use mine. There, yeah, that helps. Okay, the last thing we need to do is change that rate. That's like the time scale. If you press plus, it goes up to one. And this is the sky in real time. But what I'm going to do is bring us all the way up to 32 times. So you can see the time advance up there, 1020. And periodically, the screen is going to refresh. So you see how it says computing. And we're tracking the moon as it goes across the sky. Here we are near Austin, Texas. And it's 1030 AM. Oh, there, it's beginning. The hush falls over the crowd as the moon begins to block the sun. A bigger piece of the sun is missing. Oh, I bounced back a little. There we go. It's kind of like Pac-Man. Oh, there, a big chunk of it's gone now. The moon moving over the sun. Do you remember solar eclipses when we were kids back in the 80s? They would, I don't know about you, but they locked all of us in like our school room and they put up all this black paper. Oh, it's getting dark. And they put all this like black paper and tin foil over the windows. And they warned all the kids and we basically had to hide under our desks and they gave us for the whole day and they gave us like a hot dog and uh, we couldn't do anything except sit in our classroom all day with uh, the windows completely covered up. It's actually pretty frightening. It was like, you are going to go blind. Computing the moon. Here we go. Computing Mercury. Woohoo! The sky's getting darker and everything. Oh, it's we're almost there. Pain moon. Pain sun. Oh, we're getting so close. We turn off the symbols. But I'm gonna center it back on the moon. You see it was tracking something else. I guess it was just uh, keeping its current position. Oh, it's getting so dark. There's just a sliver of sun left. This is it. The end of the Earth. The end of time. There it is. Totality. The sky is completely black in the middle of the day. Or late morning, at least, 11.40 a.m. Oh, there. The sun is coming back. There goes the sun. I guess we could actually track the sun instead. It says the eclipse. What's the word? Wanes? I don't know. I know the moon wanes. There we go, and the sky is brightening up. And there we go, the sun is returning. Okay, so if you aren't going to make it to the actual eclipse, I hope this, uh, this is a pretty good substitute, 1984 style. Well, let's uh, change that field of view again. Back to 72. We should see a lot more of the sky now. There it is. Of course, it takes even longer to compute each uh, step.
when you've got the field of view wider. And the eclipse is almost over. I think where I live, we're only going to get about 74% coverage or something like that. Oh, I should go back to tracking the sun. The uh, computers and all that responsive while it's computing, you can't uh, change the options here. <laughs> I got in lucky. There we go. And maybe I should try this with the super CPU sometime. Well, there, the eclipse is nearly over. See, it has to calculate all the extra planets there. It's over. We survived. Okay, that's it. Thank you for sharing this historic astronomic event with me. Thanks to my patrons for their support. Thanks to Bruce Thomas for his help. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.